Okay, now at some point, we're going to learn how to solve these things. Um, I realize, again, today, this first lesson is all about definitions and just vocabulary. Uh, but at some point in this course, we will learn how to solve uh, this differential equation. So what um, function of y would solve this particular problem? So for, the, for right now, though, I'm going to say, well, let's verify. So let's say dy dx equals xy uh, to the 1 half power. And I'm going to say y equals 1 16th x to the 4th. And the question is, uh, are those uh, equivalent? Uh, is, that, does that, is that correct? Right? Um, and so what I want to do is I want to do uh, two things. I want to first calculate dy dx. Uh, so let's do that. So dy dx, uh, drop down our exponent here, so 4 times 1 16th, x to the 4 minus 1. So that would be uh, 1 4th x cubed, would be dy dx. OK. And then uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to, so that's the, the left side. Uh, and then I want to take a look at the right side. And the right side says uh, x to the uh, y to the 1 half. So let's substitute that in. And let's see what happens. So uh, 1 half, 1 16 to the 1 half, 1 half uh, x power exponent is really square root. So that is the square root of 1 16th, which is 1 fourth. And then the square root of x squared, or x to the fourth is x squared, which if I uh, simplify that expression, I get 1 fourth. Uh, x cubed, so that's the right side there. And what do I notice? I notice they in fact match. So I have verified that. Um, is that uh, true on the entire interval of the domain? So from negative infinity to infinity? Uh, yeah, yeah, I just used general rules. We don't have a reason to limit um, when that would be uh, correct. And then you gotta think back to, well, what situations have we ever seen where we would limit uh, the domain of something. So if we were dealing with, uh, I don't know, some sort of fractional equation with the differential, um, or same thing with, with logs or radicals, or, or you know, basic college algebra type domain restrictions, uh, and that didn't come up at all in this particular one. Uh, so a solution to a differential equation that is identically zero on uh, any on an interval is actually considered to be what's called a trivial solution. Uh, boring things uh, in math, just trivial ones. Uh, and then when we get to talking about actual solutions, um, we'll find that uh, if you remember in calculus when you uh, integrate things, you end up with a uh, plus C a lot of times. So uh, you will find that we will have solutions that will have uh, multiple correct answers of a certain format uh, dependent upon some sort of initial parameters and what values of plus C that we're aware of. And actually in our second lesson we're going to get to uh, some cases of that. So just keep in mind that when we, so when we get to solving ordinary differential equations we typically don't have uh, a singular answer, but we'll have a some sort of solution, solution curve uh, that describes a, a family of answers on that. Uh, and then that brings us to implicit and explicit solutions. Okay, so a solution uh, in which the dependent variable is uh, expressed solely in terms of the independent variable and consists uh, and constants, sorry, constants is said to be an explicit solution. Uh, and a function, and remember where I said uh, if that equals zero, that means something. Um, so if I have a function expression where it equals zero, that's said to be an implicit as opposed to an explicit. So an impl implicit solution of an ordinary differential equation, uh, provided there exists at least one function that satisfies that. Um, so for example, uh, the relation x squared plus y squared equals 25, that's a circle, uh, radius 5, uh, is an implicit solution of the differential equation uh, dy dx uh, equals negative x over y. Uh, let's verify that real quick. So let me get some, let me get out, I guess, my paper. 
So let's take the derivative uh, with respect to x. Uh, so d d x of x squared plus d d x of y squared uh, of d d x of 25. Okay. So the derivative with respect to x of x squared, that's just going to be 2x. Uh, this is going to be 2y uh, dy dx because of implicit differentiation. And that part's going to be 0. Uh, so if I uh, solve for dy dx, right? Uh, let's see, that's going to be 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. I carry this up over here. Uh, so then I get dy dx is negative 2x over positive 2y, which simplifies down to negative xy. Okay, so um, yeah, just wanted to just justify that. Uh, partial differential equation, uh, just kind of show you, um, just wasn't making that up at the last second. Okay, so uh, just continuing on that, that brief discussion of solutions. Um, so in, in differential equations, and I kind of alluded to this already, so I think I'm just rehashing the same thing I just kind of said a second ago. Um, but when we do integrals, uh, especially if we do indefinite integrals, we have that plus c constant term that shows up. Uh, that's very similar to what happens with differential equations. So we end up solving a differential equation. We end up having a uh, family of solutions. Um, and you kind of see down here at the bottom, let's see. Uh, let's see, if a solution uh, consists of constant C is a set of solutions called a one parameter family of solutions. So uh, if we end up solving uh, differential and we have a single C term that we're worried about, um, then that's just a one parameter family. Uh, but we might have multiple. So you kind of see down here at the bottom that this is a generic uh, function that is a solution to uh, lots of uh, differential equations. And so you'll see that we have C1 and C2. So there's two generic constants in any uh, sets of C1, C2s would, would be a solution for this. So we would define this to be a two parameter family because we could have uh, C1 equal to zero and C2 could be anything. We could have C2 equal to zero and C1 could be anything. Or we could have C1 and C2 actually be different terms. Um, and so we, that's why we end up generating these uh, family parameters uh, of solutions. So uh, this would be a, a linear second order uh, parameter, a two parameter family, uh, but we could have an infinite number of things uh, as possible solutions uh, for certain differential equations out there. Uh, and sorry, I didn't uh, have this on the screen at the time, but I do now. Uh, so this would be a second order differential and this particular one um, actually does satisfy that. Uh, and let's jump in and take a look at that. So uh, here's my initial y. Uh, I just need to take some derivatives and, and just once I've got uh, y prime and y double prime, uh, then I can just evaluate that into my differential and just verify that it actually does uh, provide a general solution. So uh, y prime, Let's see, c1 e to the x, uh, c1, c sub 1 we treat as a constant. So that's a uh, derivative of that is just c sub 1 e to the x uh, because the derivative e to the x is e to the x. Uh, here, on the other hand, uh, we have an illustration of product rule. So product rule says the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Uh, so that's y prime would equal that. So I'm going to write this out here, c2x e to the x plus c2x e to the x on that one. Uh, and then I need a y double prime. All right, well, this kind of feels familiar. Um, these two guys are going to be the exact same term when I take those derivatives. So c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the x. 
Uh, and then this particular one we just saw a second ago, because um, that's going to generate x e to the x plus e to the x. OK, so c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the x plus c2 x e to the x plus c2 e to the x. OK, so let's try our best to verify this. So I'm going to put a little space here. See, in fact, it does equal 0. All right, so we have uh, c1 e to the x plus uh, 2 c2 e to the x plus c2 x e to the x. And then we have minus 2. And I'm going to do a little highlight action here, so emphasize that. So minus 2 c1 e to the x plus c2 x e to the x plus c2 e to the x, and then plus uh, that initial one up there. C2 x e to the x. Okay, so uh, let's just do a little canceling action here. So this one says I've got two c1 e to the x's right there, and there's one of them, and there's two of them. All right, so that checks. Uh, this one says I got two c2 x e to the x's, and I got a c2 x e to the x, and a c2 x e to the x. All right, yay. Uh, and then uh, I've got right here, I've got two of these C2e to the x's, and I got two of those guys, so they end up canceling out. All right, so that in fact is true. Um, and the point is, you'll, you'll do a lot of this on this very first homework assignment where you'll be given a function, and your job is going to be to verify that it does satisfy a particular differential on that. So that whole process, you'll just get a little practice on. All right, so one last little point I'll make. Uh, sorry, my little box covers the screen there. Uh, is uh, we kind of get uh, the assumption that uh, you know every, all the examples that we've done were in terms of x and y. Uh, so we start seeing things outside of that like, that must be wrong, um, and that's not that's not necessarily the case. Um, so I hope you don't get the impression that uh, we can't use variables like t. Um, because it, we, we definitely could. We could definitely use other variables and other different function types. Um, but at this point, I'll kind of stop and go, good luck. Um, reach out if you need any other help or things on your first assignment, and welcome to the course.